Mike Hill was the uh, sitting Labour MP for Hartlepool. Uh, he won the election back in 2019 by a relatively narrow margin uh, against, amongst others, uh, the Brexit Party, of course, represented uh, by Richard Tice. It turns out uh, that there was, however, a bit of a scandal hanging about, um, and he was suspended originally by the Labour Party. He was then unsuspended so that he could run in the election. And now he's had to quit because the sexual harassment uh, charge, which was laid against him, uh, is going to come back and haunt him in May of this year uh, so that uh, uh, he's probably uh, felt that it was better to step down uh, while he still could. We're going to talk to Dr. Akiba San now, independent analyst in British Public Attitudes, because he's going to tell us what Labour need to do to hold on to the seat. Rakeem, very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed. I mean, the first question I would ask is how on earth that uh, this guy was able to run for election when the allegation was already made against him. He'd already been suspended by the Labour Party. Uh, and then it turns out they sort of unsuspended him so he could win the seat. Well, it's absolutely remarkable, Mike, yeah. but there's 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 many remarkable things which uh, currently take place within the Labour Party. I think in terms of the uh, upcoming by-election, if I'm being honest, Mike, I think Labour has its work cut out. Mm. Uh, as, as you mentioned, Mike Hill, when he ran in the 2019 general election, Labour were essentially saved by a severe uh, pro-leave split mm. between the Conservative Party and the Brexit Party, which has uh, since then been rebranded as Reform UK. Yeah, uh, I, th I think the what's really interesting is that who has been selected by Labour for the by-election, Dr Paul Williams, who I would consider to be an ardent Remainer. He was supportive of the second referendum policy. He was also supportive of the UK's continuing uh, continued involvement in the European Medicines Agency. Mm. And when you see uh, what's been going on in the continent, especially with the flip-flopping and the unprofessional approach to the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, yeah. I don't think that'll put him in good stead, especially in the seat that voted 70% leave. Right, exactly. And in, it's very likely, certainly from what I'm hearing, I'm sure you're hearing the same, the reform will stand uh, in this by-election in May. Um, and it could well be that they will get even closer to possibly even winning the seat from Labour. Well, I think what's interesting with, with this particular seat, I think the Conservative Party will definitely be in buoyant mood. I think, the, especially with the public optimism surrounding the vaccine rollout, there's a very interesting uh, survey which came out this week, Mike, which showed that 88% of British people feel that the government is doing a good job with the, with the vaccine rollout. I think the only thing that could really save Labour in this seat, if I'm being completely honest, Mike, is if the various pro-Brexit uh, political parties that would compete in the uh, in compete in the seat, if they just take if they set, if they split the pro-Brexit vote in Hartlepool in a number of ways, that is the only way that Labour could win a seat like this. Mm. I think in terms of Hartlepool in particular, it's, it's, it's worth uh, knowing that Labour actually lost Hartlepool Borough Council. Uh, back uh, in, in the last local elections. And it was interesting that some of the political parties that they lost wards to included UKIP. Mm. Uh, so th th there is that. There are Eurosceptic minor parties that will take the Hartlepool by-election seriously. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing as well. Labour's suffering from a kind of identity crisis, isn't it? Because we've seen Sir Keir Starmer talking about wrapping himself in a flag, you know, wearing a decent suit, trying to differ from the Jeremy Corbyn uh, sort of view of the world. But unfortunately for him, there's still an awful lot of people in the Labour Party who don't see it that way. And in fact, I think Angela Rayner is one of them. So I see them struggling to actually select someone that they can all agree is the right candidate. I think here with Labour's patriotic, uh, sort of patriotic rebranding exercise, it lacks authenticity. In, in my view, and I think that that's and I think more broadly, though, that there's a there's real cultural competing tensions within the Labour Party. How does it rebuild its ties with culturally conservative, patriotic voters in the pro Brexit provinces and maintain the support of pro EU, socially liberal, metropolitan city dwellers? I think that's a huge problem for mm. the Labour Party. So in that sense, I, I sympathise with Sir Keir Starmer. But we had this discussion many times before, Mike. One of Labour's biggest challenges after the disastrous general election back in December 2019 was how can it rebuild its trust in pro-Brexit working class territory? Sir Keir Starmer, chief architect of the second referendum policy, represents a North London seat which voted 73% remain. 
I knew I could see these problems coming from a mile. And I think the Hart Hartlepool by-election is going to be a very serious test of his leadership. Mm, absolutely right. And what damage do you think will be done to Starmer as leader of the party if Labour lose this seat? Because people are looking at it as a kind of a, a weather vane um, and, a, and a measurement of how well he's doing. Well, absolutely. It's worth noting that Labour in the last uh, general election in, in the northeast of England, they lost seats such as Bishop Auckland, Sedgefield, uh, Northwest Durham. What would be really devastating here is if Labour was to lose a seat that it has won without fail since February 1974. That, and considering they're the opposition party against a government which has been in power now for over a decade, a, a loss in this by-election for Labour could be devastating for Sir Keir Starmer. Mm, I think you're absolutely right. Rakeem, thank you very much indeed. Dr Rakeem Hassan saying how difficult it's going to be for Labour to hang on to Hartlepool in the wake of all the things that are going on uh, around it. And if he does not hold on to it, does that mean he might have to step down? What do you think?